welcome to The Truth Will Not Be Silenced, the show that allows Black people to be seen, to be heard, and to be human. I'm your host, Melissa Woodfork White. In today's episode, we will talk with author Richard S.T. Gilliam. We'll discuss the controversial topic of diversity in STEM and the importance that needs to be shared that allows us to be seen, to be heard, and to be human. As a Black professional woman with over 28 years in the workforce, and who has taught STEM in middle to middle school students, I understand the importance. Sharing our stories allows us to be seen, to be heard, and to be human. There will be a special surprise at the end of the show. Be sure to listen all the way through for details. Our guest today is none other than author Richard S.T. Gilliam. Rich attended the Historical Black College University St. Augustine's University in Raleigh, North Carolina, and graduated with a degree in biology in 2015. He worked as a scientist in his early career and now works as a robotic engineer. He grew up in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and went to college in North Carolina where he currently lives. Using his creativity to streamline his process brings him great joy. His love of science shines through in his motivational words and everything that he does, including the writing of his book. With the goal of promoting diversity in the STEM field, he plans to engage, delight, and guide others into rewarding careers. Rich is the author of the book, Diverse in STEM, which is an inspiring and easy to read children's book that teaches children about different possible STEM careers. He is going to share with us about his book, and the importance of diversity in STEM. Hi, Rich. Thanks for joining our show today. Welcome. Hey, Melissa. Thanks for uh, inviting me. That, that amazing welcome. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me today. Thank you. So our first question for today is, can you tell us about your book, Diverse in STEM, and what is STEM? That's a great question. So I like to just kind of start off for like, what is STEM? So when we think about STEM, STEM is just not a one subject matter. STEM refers to science, technology, engineering, and math. And when you think about STEM, this is a field that's basically putting all of these subjects all together. So when we think about STEM, this is STEM is in the future. STEM is ev everything that's around us. So when we look at STEM, this is why, what brings me to why I wrote my book. So Diverse in STEM is a children's STEM book that goes into the life of eight children, 10 children, I'm sorry, from diverse backgrounds and also led by a African teacher from Ghana who basically inspires these children to go into specific careers. So that's a little bit about the book. All right. That sounds, <laughs> it's, it's a much need. And I love the fact that you're bringing attention to these careers in STEM and to diversify STEM. So why is diversity in STEM important? So when we think of the subject, why is diversity in STEM important? That's a uh, complicated uh, topic, but diversity in STEM, I will say is so important because as we go into the future, everything, like I said before, everything around us is surrounding STEM, whether it's science, technology, engineering and math and we need diverse backgrounds of people to be able to innovate these new skills that are needed for um, just going into STEM. So when we look at STEM I kind of just going into my background. Um, I'm a, like I said I'm originally from Philadelphia mm -hmm. PA. Um, I came to North Carolina in 20, 2011 for school and where I studied um, a STEM field and when I was in school, I did different STEM internships and I was always the only black person um, doing amazing things. But I always wondered why, like, why can't I have, why isn't there more people like me around? Mm -hmm. So it's just a very, very important where we, we just need to have more, I guess, African-Americans in, in the field and just more diversity where it can be shared more. <laughs> Well, Rich, I can relate to you on about being the only one. So my experience with teaching out, and my listeners and viewers are familiar with this, teaching out in Arizona, where some of the schools that I taught at, I was the only one. 
And I was trying to figure out the same thing you trying to figure out and also inspire and encourage people is that we shouldn't be the only one. And the schools that I was teaching at were predominantly black and brown schools. So we're talking black African-American students and Hispanic or Latino background. And so I'm like, but why am I the only, <laughs> the only one? There needs to be more of us. So I can totally relate to your experience in STEM and the need for diversity in STEM. Because although diversity is encouraged everywhere, it doesn't mean that it takes place everywhere. So this leads me to my next question. How has writing this book affected you? Wow, that's, that's, a, um, that's, a, that's a deep question there. How, how has write, writing this book affected me? First of all, I would say writing this book has really affected me because it really just showed me the impact that I can kind of make on people. First of all, I had the idea of writing this book for just about three years now. I had the idea of writing this STEM book just about for about three years now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, where I live at, I, I live by a graveyard and I always drive past this graveyard and I always think like, wow, the biggest dreams are in the graveyard. Some people have, go, you know, die with dreams and ambitions that they have. So I'm like, you know, I, I can't just sit on an idea that I have that might can, you know, impact the youth or impact people around the world. I just have to go for it. And, you know, sometimes we have um, ideas and we not we might wonder, you know, how is this going to come together or how, mm -hmm. how can this happen? But, you know, just taking that first initiative and going for it is the first process and, you know, everything kind of comes together. So, you know, th this book is just positively affecting me, um, just giving me more self-belief in myself and just realizing that the impact that I can, you know, make on people. Um, seeing my, my book when it first, it's been on pre-order for about, the Diverse in STEM has been on pre-order for, what, two weeks now. And it was number one in new releases in STEM education and number one in new releases in professional development. And in the first two weeks was just, just amazing to me. Um, so it shows that it's really the need for that um, diversity and STEM out here and people are interested in, in knowing more, so. And not only that, you're seeing that I should not be the only one that looks like me in this field. There should be more people that look like me in this field, but in order for there to be more people that look like you in this field, it needs to be taught. And that's one of the things that I commend you on doing with the writing of this book, Diverse in STEM. So what have you learned as a result of writing this book? Yeah, when, to kind of answer that question, what have I learned? Um, you know, I really learned about myself, you know, just having that, I've always been the type of person to, you know, even in my, my uh, STEM career, you know, I, a lot of the work, my, a lot of the work that I do might be very hard and challenging, and um, I, I'm sometimes looking at myself as a slow learner. It might take me a, a while to kind of, you know, learn a concept, but I always have that kind of go-getter spirit, and I really just learn more about myself that you know I just don't have, I don't have any any quit in my in, in myself, you know, even when there's times I might have it was in the process of writing my book where I might might have had like some type of writer's block or I didn't know uh where where to go next you know i always just went into the process of you know i just have to continue you know brick by brick um just don't give up and some days might be rough but i just have to keep going so and i love that because it when you were saying that it brought me back to your example of of the graveyard about how many dreams die in the graveyard and that being your inspiration to writing the book not only that being one of your inspirations, but the biggest inspiration is to educate people and to encourage people to this field, to diversify it so that you don't have to be the only one. I think that's amazing. How does sharing your story today about writing this book help others? I kind of I reiterated, but I want to hear it from you. <laughs> no, 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 that's, that's great. Um, I really want to say sharing my story really should just show that there should there can be diversity in STEM you know in my book um I actually the character on the front cover holding the R I'm giving the little I guess preview of the book but the character holding the R is actually me 
His name is is Richie, um, me as a child. So it's really showing those direct images of, you know, possible STEM careers that you can go into. The uh, child in the book envisions himself in a STEM career, and now I'm currently in a STEM career. So I really will say it just my book really shows those um, direct images for, for children. And to, you know, I always also a big saying that I have is like, your, your imagination is the biggest nation. So if you can imagine something that could be done, you know, it can, it can be done um, just with that, you know, willpower, so. Yes. Now I'm <laughs> going to privilege some of our listeners and our watchers to something that you share with me that I want you to share about yeah. how you got from Philly to North Carolina and your mother being a part of all of this is if not the inspiration to oh, yeah. all of this share that with us yeah definitely yeah my my story is um is is very it's, it's been it's been a journey um and that's why i'm so you know passionate to you know give back and help others you know kind of believe in yourself and kind of promote the stem field you know uh I, like i said i grew up in, in philadelphia not the best not the best area um, kind of really lacking motivation when I when I grew up um, and I, I struggled in high school. I, I graduated from high school. I would say my senior year, I might have kind of picked it up a little bit. But other than that, I really didn't take school serious. And I, I really didn't have too much motivation. Um, but I, I graduated from high school with a 1.8 GPA. I'm, I'm transparent about that. Um, I, I'm pleased to share that. Um, but yeah, I graduated from high school with a 1.8 GPA. Um, my mother, she found like a college recruiter for a say. And I remember one day we went into this guy's office and he just was explaining like, you know, schools in the South, they accept uh, young black men with lower GPAs. So me and one of my friends I grew up with, we both went to, uh, we both ended up at the St. Augustine University um, in 20, 2011. And, you know, when I first started at school, um, my mom kind of, you know, she was on payment plans, kind of paying for me to go to school. And I, and I seen her kind of, kind of struggle with that. And that kind of just gave me, um, motivation after that. I just was really motivated and I just started to get scholarships after my freshman year and sophomore year. And that really just continued just to drive me to where I'm at now. And I've always just had that motivation. And, um, you know, I, I look at it every day like wow where I, where I came from to where I'm at now so yeah it's just just all having that willpower and, and, and believing yourself and not not where you came from not where you came from but where you're at where you're at now you know you can always change your story so yes and I think that it's important that you shared yeah. that because a lot of times we think that these are the cards that have been dealt us and there's nothing that we can do about but then when we hear stories like yours, Rich, and it's like, okay, so I had a, uh, what'd you say, a one point? Oh, 1.8. I'm, I'm, 1.8. I'm transparent about it. <laughs> yes, a 1.8. And, and, and for those of you that are watching and listening, I'm smiling because that wasn't his end. And so that's what the sharing of his story allows and encourages everyone to see and to hear is that his beginning was not his end. And look where he is now. He has written a book that's important to him and is important to what he loves to do and to diversify that field. That's very challenging to do when you're the only one that looks like you when you go into these places, these fields, these internships and these places of work and you want there to be more of you. You want it to be di diversified. And so I commend you on your journey. I commend you on sharing your story. And I commend you on writing this awesome children's book to let them know. I want you to share, before we wrap up, I want you to share what careers are available in STEM. Just give us a list. Sure. There is, you know, even with the, the future coming about, um, there's so many new careers in STEM. For example, like I'm, I'm a robotic engineer where I work on robotics, where I troubleshoot cold robotics. Um, there's a lot of jobs such as new technology, like the data science is, mm -hmm. a, is a hot field right now. So a lot of data science jobs. And as you think of the future with all new technology coming about, 
there's going to be even more of those types of jobs that's going to be available. So it's important to realize that, you know, in the STEM field, it's not just, you know, not just a regular sciences job. You can go into even like a food sciences job. Uh, our, all of our food around us, that's all dealing with science. Yeah. You can go into different industries like that as well. So, um, but yeah, I would really say that the hot field right now, is, it seems like it's really the, you know, the, the data science field, the data sciences field. Uh, that's a really a big field that I'm, that I'm seeing that's coming about that a lot of people are, are going into. Um, well, all right. Thank you so much, Rich. Now tell us, tell all of the viewers and the watchers where we can get this awesome book, Diverse in STEM. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah, Diverse in STEM is available now. The ebook is now available for pre-order on Amazon. Um, if you pre-order the, the ebook right now, you'll be able to have direct access to it on April 14th. The hardback copy will be available on April 14th for you to order. Um, I'm in the process of getting my website um, created and I will be having my book sold on there as well. But to stay updated with me, you can follow me on all of my social media profiles. That's on Facebook, Rich St. Gilliam and LinkedIn, also Rich St. Gilliam and on Instagram, just want to be underscore rich. And also um, kind of have a surprise this summer. Uh, I, ha I haven't worked out lo the logistics yet, but I am planning on going on like a STEM tour. Um, so I might be in a city near you. So uh, just stay tuned and, you know, and follow me to stay updated. So. All right, everyone. So there you have it. Make sure you follow him. Make sure you pre-order his audio. You already heard that it was the number one in the STEM field for diversity. You want to make sure that you get a copy of that. And Rich, we appreciate you so much coming on to our show, sharing us your love for diversity in STEM and the book that you wrote. We look forward to wonderful things coming from you. I love to hear that you have, you're in the works of planning the STEM tour. I'm oh, going to yeah. keep my ear out for it, too. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But thank you so very much for coming on the show. We are happy to have you. Next week, we'll continue to discuss controversial topics about race and have conversations about personal and professional experiences with racism, love, loss, employment, and education. Stories that need to be shared, seen, and heard that makes us human. The truth will not be silenced to be seen, to be heard, to be human. The surprise, following the link in the show's notes lets Buzzsprout know that we sent you and help support our show. Buzzsprout is the best way to launch a professional podcast. Want to ask a question, be a guest, or subscribe to this podcast, The Truth Will Not Be Silenced? Click on the show link. Thank you for joining us today.